All right. So yesterday we talked about um, punctuation in compound and complex sentences. Remember, compound sentences have a independent and an independent, and they are conjoined with a comma and a conjunction. A complex sentence has a dependent, a comma, and an independent. We also talked about how we use semicolons when we're listing things and that already have commas, like dates. And then we use commas when we're listing things in more than three. And we also talked about introductory elements, which is when it's set off from the rest of the sentence. So things like, unfortunately, well, at the beginning, in October, things like that. And then today, we are going to learn about commas with direct address and tag questions. So commas are often used to set off names or nouns that indicate direct address. Mrs. Kneifel does this all the time. Like every single time I write you a report card comment, I say like, Rochelle, comma, you did a great job. I literally do that all the time. Direct address is when someone is being spoken to within a sentence. If the name appears in the middle of the sentence, comma should be before and after. If it's in the beginning, it goes after the name. If it's at the end, it's like a tag question. It goes before the question. So here's an example, direct address. We're talking to Leo. So here's Leo's name. I put a comma, tag question, didn't you? The comma goes before the question, okay? So here's some examples here. George Washington Carver was an amazing man, wasn't he? So wasn't he is a tag question. So after man, we put a comma. We do not have to put a comma after George Washington Carver because he's dead. We're just talking about him. We're not addressing him. We're not saying George Washington Carver, you did great. Like, that's not what we're trying to say. So it just goes after man before, wasn't he? Sandra, did you read the same book I did? After Sandra, we put a comma, we're addressing her. You have time to ask questions before you take the test. You have time to ask questions. Hmm. You have time to ask questions. You have time to ask questions, class, comma, before you take the test. I don't know. I don't love number three. I'll make sure there's not one there. I feel like it should be class, comma, you have time. Um, or in between class and before. Um, I wonder if there were other African-American inventors like George Washington Carver that could read about Miss Temple's. Miss Temple that we could read about, comma, Miss Temple. So fun fact, here's a direct address, but instead of Miss Temple, Miss Temple, I wonder, it's about Miss Temple, okay? So we're not reading about Miss, see, that's why commas are important. We're not reading about Miss Temple. We're reading, we want to read about books about George Washington Carver, comma, Miss Temple. That's who you're telling it to. That's why commas are important. I will give you a reading list at yeah, the end of class. Mm, Jack's who we're addressing, so in between class and Jack. That would be great, wouldn't it? Ooh, tag question. I, it goes after great before, wouldn't it? So it's really okay. how you... Evan? That would be great, wouldn't it? Like, that's how we naturally read. Sandra, did you read the same book I did? Like, we naturally take those pauses where those commas are. So here's just a little bit of review. You can separate items in a series or list with commas. So here's an example. We need eggs, milk, and bread. So after eggs, after milk, before and and bread. You can set, you can use a comma to set introductory words and phrases. For example, by 1871. Um, or therefore, or otherwise, anything like that. You can indicate a name in a direct address, which would be Maria. Or you could also put Maria at the end. You could do tag questions like, wasn't it? Couldn't it be? How's that? Something like that. And then we also separate things in a series or list. We need eggs, milk, and bread. See, or um, uh, whatever, semicolon. We also need soap, shampoo, and lotion. Because we already have commas, we can't say put a comma between bread and we because those are... Um, a complex sentence. So instead of a comma, we would use a semicolon. Or you can also use a semicolon when we're doing dates. Marissa, put your hair down. That's not what we're focusing on right now. 
so this is just more review, but I want to go to our page so we can go over some of those. Hold on. Let me get to the page. Share this tab instead. All right, so if you recall, yesterday we did a few of these together. Oh, Virginia Jones is also on this. Um, okay. Let me make a copy real quick. Let me make a copy real quick. Okay, there. Share this tab instead. Okay, now I should be the only one on it. All right, so remember yesterday, all we had to do was add our commas and semicolons into our compound and complex sentences. Remember, compounds, independent, independent, joined with and, but, or, so. So this first one was a compound sentence and all you had to do was add a comma before, but this one was a complex sentence because there's a dependent and an independent and there's no and, but, or, or so. So it's just a comma. So you had to finish those three on your own. Then the introductory element, you had to highlight and then correctly punctuate. So you didn't just have to do in fact, you also had to add the comma. So we could do another one and be, well, highlight, comma, there is one, there is always more to learn. So you need to make sure you're adding the comma and the punctuation, okay? And then here would be what we just talked about today, which would be comma and direct address and tag questions. So commas are used to set off names. Do we need something up front? Okay, well, okay, please stop, Angelina. And Landon, maybe we could ask nicer and not so aggressively. Commas are used to set off names that indicate direct address or when someone is being spoken to. If a name appears in the middle of the sentence, the comma should be placed on either side. If it's in the beginning, it's going to be after the name. If it's at the end, it's going to be at the end of the name. So all we have to do is add correct punctuation to each sentence and highlight each punctuation mark you make. Please pass the index cards, Roberto. So Roberto is who I'm addressing. So I have to add a comma before I say Roberto, and then I have to highlight my comma. That way Mrs. Kanaifo can see it. Now, next one. I want to get started on my research project. Don't you? Where does my comma go in this one, Nolan? Right after project, because I have a tag question. I'm asking someone a question. So after project, I need to put a comma. And of course, I have to highlight it. That way, Mrs. Kneipel can see it. And there's only um, three more to do there. So you're doing tag questions slash um, direct address. And then the final page is just reviewing. There's five extra review. So both commas and semicolons are punctuation marks used within sentences. They help readers understand the meaning of a sentence by clearly separating different parts. So all you have to do, once again, add correct punctuation to each sentence, highlight each punctuation mark you make. Reading is a good way to learn about other people, don't you think? There's one comma that needs to go in this sentence. Would anyone like to suggest where the comic book, or where the comic book goes, sorry. Um, where the comma goes, sorry, I'm so off, for sure. after people because there's a tag question there. So we're putting in a comma and then we have to highlight. So there's only four more to do there. You have to read it, add the commas or add the um, semicolon if you need a semicolon. And the final page is the same page as always. You have to read it and you have to fix it. Same as always, nothing crazy, okay? Are there any questions currently about anything? Remember, tomorrow we do not have a live grammar. We have Mrs. Bunch instead. So we will not have time to work on our grammar tomorrow. Well, like necessary, we might have time to work on our grammar, but we have, um, we won't have like a scheduled live time for grammar because we have Mrs. Bunch. Marissa, leave your hair alone for the second time. This is not beauty shop time. The camera is not for you to do your hair in, ma'am. So, 
we um, will not have time for that live, but I will be creating a live of Mrs. Bunch talking. So those of you at home can join our Mrs. Bunch lesson. So at 1140, we do not have a grammar live. It's a Mrs. Bunch live. Okay. But we do have the rest of the day today to work on grammar. I'm sitting here. If you guys have questions, grammar is due by 8 a.m. on Thursday. Are there any questions? Going once, going twice. Question, question. Anyone? Anyone? Question? 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 If not, you are free to leave me and work on your grammar. This will be posted, of course. So long, farewell. Yes, now you may.